I'm Mike Seller, and you are listening to the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode mm-hmm. on the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast. We have one of our favorite guests mm-hmm. in the house with us today, <laughs> and a returning guest. The one and only Mike Zeller. Excited to be here, guys. You guys always light it up and provide so much value, and you're just a joy, both of you guys, and uh, and really talented at what you do. And so it's always great to connect. I'm glad to be here in LA with you guys. Thank Absolutely. you, appreciate yeah. it. And I want we'll talk more about like why you were in LA in a little mm-hmm. bit because I mean we had the pleasure to go to your mastermind and, and speak to your students, which is great. I just mm-hmm. want to talk more about that, but. I'm excited. I mean, you brought us a bottle of wine here. You brought us a book. I mean, I mean, do you, are we, we going to crack it open or should uh, we just save it? Uh, we'll, we'll save it for a little bit, <laughs> but yeah. Sounds good. So, uh, Mike, uh, I want to I want to just kind of segue differently with this podcast. Normally, we just get right into like certain topics, mm-hmm. but Chris and I were like, let's shake this up a little yeah, bit. Let's definitely. get right into rapid, dynamic mm-hmm. questions. So, are you ready for that? I'm game. Let's do it, baby. All right. So, you've been in LA since Wednesday or Thursday, right? Uh, Tuesday. Actually. Okay. Yeah. So, you've probably seen a lot of Bill boards around just driving mm-hmm. around yep tons of billboards new movies new shows that okay. i know we're out <laughs> okay so. so if you had a billboard and you could just write mm-hmm. anything on there what would that billboard say and why hmm my first thought uh was like mike zeller unleash the power within but then that's like so tony robbins so i was like oh i can't do that um even though he's my inspirational mentor i'd say um Unlock your divine potential. Okay. And step into your greatness. That's what I would have on my billboard. Powerful. Yeah. Okay. Powerful. Got it. Yeah. So the last time we did this interview was probably about a year ago, right? Mm-hmm. So how are you consuming content these days? Is it through audio, video? Um, you know, I don't do books? a ton of video. I do a lot of books. Um, I do a fair amount of audio, like audio books, but I'm, I'm diving in like pretty hard of like, and one of the things I love about a book versus a podcast even versus a video is like man when you get when you get a book you've actually gotten really refined distilled core essence now there's an energy that happens on a podcast that is beautiful and magical and a lot of new things open up on a podcast so I love those but I'm really diving pretty hard into uh, you know some continued shifts on money like I'm I'm uh, working diligently to bust through new money mindsets and new money ceilings and have studied probably read 35 money books in the last 18 wow. months okay um, at least and just many of them three or four times and just continue to move in that direction because I know I'm so close to that next that whole next plateau you yeah, know? Yeah. And, and doing things like we where we went to um, Pacific Palisades yeah. um, on Sunday and just walked through our favorite neighborhood, go, went and imagined um, living yes. up there, walked through a 10,000 square foot home that is $15 million, the most expensive home I've ever walked through. And <laughs> I was like, this is where I want to be, you know, in a couple years. And um, just to anchor emotionally and mentally where we want to be as, as a couple and, and where I want to be as, as an entrepreneur that I know is there for me once I bust through that ceiling. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. And that's such a powerful practice to actually mm. go there and put yourself there and just visualize that. Yeah. So what's like one to two books on like the, the money mindset that you really recommend? Um, two of them that I recommend the most, uh, Science of Getting Rich. Okay. Um, so good, Wallace Waddle's old classic. Um, and then You Are a Badass at Making Money. Yes. By Ren Sincero, it's yeah. terrific. I've read that like three or four times. Of course, Think and Grow Rich. And I've also really gotten, uh, excited about Neville Goodard. He wrote like Wealth Mindset, Manifest, Manifesting Miracles, kind of another classic guy that in the early 1900s was speaking a lot and, mm-hmm. and you know, all these things that we see in the new age stuff or new stuff and like Jen Sincero, she was inspired by Science of Getting Rich and all these other classics. So yeah. I've been going back through a lot of classics. Nice. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Now this past year, has there been any like ritual system or habit that you've implemented? Yeah. Just been kind of a game changer? Good question. Yeah. I've really started going deeper in positive affirmations and, and playing them in the morning and visualizing and experiencing them and doing more uh, deeper meditations to work on not just getting my mind aligned, but my energy aligned with that new future and that new reality that I want to create. Okay. And um, so that's been really good. Um, you know, so I start that off in the morning. I do those. And, and it really, 
You know, it, it, it's really an act of declaring to the world, this is what I'm creating, this is who I'm becoming, this is how I'm showing up, right? So I'm taking back control instead of being passive and sitting back and waiting for the world to happen to me. Yeah. I'm gonna happen upon the world. Yeah. Is what I want to do, right? I like that. So. Okay. Yeah, good question. Okay, what's, what's one skill, everyone, that you really advocate everyone should learn? Um, I'd say start your day off with a great morning routine. Yep. If you learn that skill, it, it, you know Einstein said compounding interest is the eighth wonder of the world. I think the ninth wonder of the world is the power of just compounding learning yep. and studying. And if you start your day off, um, it's it, you're putting fuel in your tank. You're putting you're you're making progress. You're investing in yourself first before you're giving out and creating mm -hmm. output. And you know. A very high percentage, I'm not going to say everyone, but a very high percentage of some of the most successful people in the world, happiest people, most fulfilled people, and they have great morning routines. They feed themselves yeah. first. And I see that that is often a core step that helps a lot of people break through. Yeah. Love so, it. so besides your words of affirmation, meditation, what mm -hmm. else do you do on your morning routine? Um, like. This morning, for example, I got up, I went, uh, stayed in a hotel, went down to their yoga room, did a bunch of back stretches, a little bit of movement, mm -hmm. um, got my body moving. So 10, it was about a 10 to 15 minute light workout. But it got me loosened up. I did my affirmations. I read uh, a chapter in Proverbs right now is, okay. is one of my things. One, you know, each day I'm, or I'm reading a chapter in Proverbs. I'll read um, something inspirational. Um, a breathing exercise as well. Mm -hmm. So I did uh, my Tony Robbins priming type style, okay. and and then the positive affirmations yeah. and just anchored and visualized and saw myself living out and being you know who I want to be today. Love yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I know you've been traveling a lot too the mm -hmm. past like year. You know, mm -hmm. Like you went to Spain. Yeah. Beautiful places like that. So what's like maybe like the one biggest lesson you've learned just from all the traveling this past year? <sighs> great, great question. Yeah, I've been to like five countries so far this year and um, probably will add a sixth or seventh. Um, man, creating space, that sacred space for um, for the art of creation, for uh, diving in to creating the, really the tough stuff that you wanna, like me starting to write again was really tough. Mm -hmm. Like I, I kept on hitting the wall <laughs> and even still I'm, I'm still, I've, it's like I got the wall torn down, but there's still a bunch of rubble, and and uh, but I know that's where I need to go, and I'm even in this further pruning process to open up this whole new chapter and this whole new season in my life yeah. um, as a writer and creator, and I'm super pumped about that. Um, let's see other things that I'm working on right now, like, you know, being over in Spain, that was one of the int intentions where, you know, hey, we're seven hours ahead of, you know, central time. So guess what? I don't have any emails coming my way. I don't have any text messages <laughs> coming my way to like 4 p.m. Spanish time. Mm -hmm. So that gives me the whole morning and early afternoon to create and to dream and to yeah. think. And that was really, really powerful and what I needed for the season. And it opened up some great things for my wife and I. And, and uh, you know, she started writing her novel. And mm -hmm. nice. so being overseas, it also creatively rejuvenates and, and sees, helps you imagine and dream and see new pathways. And um, helps you think through creating your business differently too. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So Mike, we know you have a lot of experience being a, a business owner, mm -hmm. entrepreneur. Um, what is your top two lessons that being an entrepreneur has taught you? Um, number one, um, first thing that comes to mind, man, um, partner, almost, in, but partner wisely and pa partner in complimentary fashion. Um, my biggest mistakes have come where I didn't have great partners that were watching other areas of the business that I'm not that great at. Like I'm great at a lot of things, but I'm not that great at everything. And and there's certain areas like, um, like you know, I love creating a business. I love driving something forward. But do I want to manage the administrative side? Do I want to manage the the P and L and manage all those core aspects? Not really. Yeah. Like I'm not as profit driven as some other entrepreneurs are, but having someone on your team that is, 
will help you keep the business healthy and sustainable and growing or help you make hard decisions sooner. Um, so that's the first one. Number two, um, I'd say manage your downside and risk. Okay. You know, some of the things I've missed out on, I've, um, I've, I've taken on. Now I've learned painfully, you know, through a lot of risk, but I've literally lost hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars in, in uh, things that didn't turn out the way I expected in the last like three or four years. Um, now I've made, you know, a good amount of money too, so I'm not complaining, right? Like I'm fortunate to have, have uh, have had the wherewithal to sustain and, and grow through that season, right? But you can manage, if you manage your risk well and, and think wisely and plan wisely, like there's a, a verse in Proverbs that says, uh, plans fail for lack of counsel, lack of wise counsel. And so um, as you're creating, this is why coaching, this is why masterminds, this is why mentors, this is why um, mentors in areas that you're not good at or uh, people that are managing areas that you're not good at no one no one can be great at everything right and then it's this one man show you've you've really got a self-employed job mm -hmm. yeah. that you stop working the business stops so as you start shifting and maturing past that you've got to you've got to uh, develop more wise advisors yeah. Uh, council. That's yeah. powerful. Mm -hmm. If you guys are looking to be a part of a badass network, if you guys are looking to learn more about marketing, get more coaching and accountability, more systems, more structure, more strategy, if you guys are looking to enhance your lifestyle, and if you guys are looking to make more income, influence, and impact, make sure to check out the link below and try to apply to our mastermind, the Dynamic Business Builders Mastermind. See if you guys are a good fit. We would love to have you. What would you say like the biggest risk you've taken this past year to where you're you were scared, you know, you had some fear, but it turned out to be a huge reward? You know, great question. I'd say um, partnering with my new uh, business partner, Michael, um, in a lot of regards, he, I call him like my rich dad. I think I mentioned that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you guys have read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it's like, man, this guy. Robert Kiyosaki gets mentored by this guy that's really smart at business. He's not famous, but he's like he really knows his stuff, and um, is also knows how to manage for profit. Like Michael is really good at that, really shrewd at investments, and 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 he, you know, we're becoming partners in everything. You know, the ink is not dry yet, so we're still finalizing those details, but we're pretty deep in that process, and being partners and everything like you know you're losing there's elements of where I'm losing control of certain decisions mm -hmm. and and he's losing control of certain decisions right like in and we're sharing equity and sharing risk and sharing reward as well but man it's it's overdue really yeah. because like there's so much we can do together right. and it's already um, I see great shifts happening and great dividends coming our way as we step into that nice. so, yeah. Honest. All right, Mike. So you're off the hot seat with the questions. Yeah. Oh, good, good. You're, you're getting me, man. You made, you made it through. I was, I was getting hot over here. I didn't see any like drop or uh, or beat off the, the forehead. So yeah, yeah, yeah. take a sip of his water. Yeah. Uh, no. Very hot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's shift gears here. So I really want to focus on masterminds in this mm -hmm. discussion because I think that you are so you know knowledgeable with that. You have a very successful mm -hmm. uh, mastermind, the Rising Stars, um, and that's one of the reasons you were here in LA. You know, yeah. this entire week was you had a mastermind group. You had us come and speak to your mm -hmm. uh, students, um, talking about content creation, which was amazing. Great mm -hmm. group of people. So yeah, you guys are active, by the way. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So where where do you see like what what is what's the big power and hype behind a mastermind, and where do you see that going? In 2020. Yeah, so one of the biggest things that I see that people miss out on is like, hey, your tribe so becomes your vibe. Like it and and not just virtual tribe. Like we all can be Instagram friends yeah. and all that, but man, the people that you really consistently see and you hang out with and they have the capacity to either pull you down, you know, I was, I was telling you guys that or I was telling the mastermind crew about the crabs in a bucket. Yeah. You know, when a crab in a bucket if if you're in your hometown and they're very uh, jealous or security oriented or your childhood friends or they're not lid lifters they're not expanders it's like crabs in a bucket a crab in a bucket if it's trying to get out and there's other crabs in the bucket is it almost is out the other crabs will literally reach up and grab it and pull it back down 
that's our life, right? But if you are um, in, an, in an environment like a mastermind, where it's a high high level experience, where you're around high caliber people, man, guess what? Your whole identity shifts. You start believing in, you start seeing each other's potential. You start speaking boldly and powerfully and lovingly over it, over uh, you know each other, and uh, relationships open up, partnerships open up. You know, I've had so many new opportunities emerge because of my my own mastermind experiences. Um, so I really see that for you guys and yeah. see see so much opportunity um, for everyone. Like if you're not, if you really want to make the most of your life as an entrepreneur, the number one predetermined from what I see that affects everything. Now there's, uh, you know, everything affects everything, but this is a huge core factor is who you spend time with. Yeah. And, and then do you get yourself in those retreat environments as well? Another piece of it, I was, I was mentoring another young entrepreneur yesterday, and she, uh, you know, one of the things that hit me was she has not invested in herself in about a year, even though her business has grown, but she's kind of, she's kind of incrementally growing. I was like, you know what? This is why, like her, her she's not made a declaration to herself. Like, I'm gonna step up and I'm gonna figure out a way to make this happen. I am going to get there. So when you, when you part with it, with it, when you do the application and you part with a credit card or down payment, whatever it is, or just show up, man, it's a declaration. You're gonna, it's time. Yeah, you have to make it. Yeah, I love that. I love the declaration, um, mm -hmm. just aspect, and I, I think you're just 100 percent uh, on just the fact that like when you do join an elite level of people like that, a tribe that just they have growth mindsets. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to play bigger in life. It's just a huge identity shift mm -hmm. to where you know, like you said, if if you know, you start believing yourself more, mm -hmm. you start seeing the possibilities because other people are doing it. You know, so yeah. it's just it's a powerful thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, like, if somebody's new to masterminds and you know they're on that edge of wanting to join one but just have no idea what to do, like, what should they look for? Because obviously, there's masterminds that are very niche specific, and then there's ones that are broad. And mm -hmm. we've been a part of ones that are broad, which I think that's a true mastermind in my opinion. But that's that's just my opinion, but what what is yours and what should they look for? Yeah, I, I think one, you know, there's uh, multiple. There's so many different types of masterminds. So find the one that serves your need and your your hunger right now. Um, whether hey, you want a guys only, you want a girls only, or you're indifferent to that. Um, and I do niche ones have relevance, but also the broader ones uh, stimulate creativity in a whole different way. Mm -hmm. um, Things that I look for for a great mastermind. A, is it in person? Virtual ones, guys, I mean, if it's better than nothing. So if you can't, uh, you know, find a way to make the in-person ones happen, then at least get the virtual ones because you get connection, collaboration, and all that. But in-person shifts your, shifts everything, shifts your energy. Um, two, um, am I aligned? Do I, does this person or this, the leader, the facilitator, does his or her message speak to me? Uh, their journey, um, and and do the do the people that are in the group are do I resonate with them? Are they aligned with who I am and who I'm becoming, and and the vision that I want to create in my future? And then can can they help me? Right, like um, you know, I have people in my mastermind that uh, man are doing huge sums of money um, in terms of revenue, like tens of millions of dollars. But they didn't really need me to coach them on how to make more money. Mm -hmm. They needed life quality. Right. So that's one of the things we created massive shifts for them is the life quality side. And others needed the income growth, right? So, so can you give me a quick example of what you mean by like the life quality? Like how someone just would just like shift from that or enhance Yeah. That? So one of my mastermind members, she, two of them, um, uh, uh, I shouldn't say her name, I guess. but. Uh, uh, we'll call her, we'll say her name is Sarah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sarah wanted to, she was working almost every day. Always messaging, always available, texting, whatever. And I was like, hey, uh, I helped her redesign and you don't have to be available all the time. It's actually counterproductive uh, to be available all the time to your business. Even though she's making a good six figures, she likes doing it, it's a high profitable business, but she wasn't present for her family, wasn't present for her kids for her husband. I'm like, so what if, what if we redesigned your work week? What if we started unplugging? What if 
you know, all that. And, and now she dropped from being available and working basically seven days a week, even though weekends were lighter, but she was always pinging and all that, to now she works 25 hours a week, if that, has more time, more freedom, is more relaxed, and has gave space for her soul to breathe yeah. as well. And to realize, hey, she actually wants to create something else. And she has an investment opportunity that she's doing that will pretty much double her income as well. So passively, yeah. you know, that she learned about through the mastermind as well. So she, um, she's got her life back. She's got way more uh, connected relationship with her children, and she her income is actually going to double. Yeah. And so she, and it started, but the first part started with being. Uh, redesigning her work patterns in a way that was energetically sustainable and she built in more renewal most entrepreneurs were on the hustle hamster wheel mm-hmm. yeah and that is a, a such a great way to burn out yeah, yeah. and Gary V yourself to death mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah and I love the story thanks for sharing that it's like I just quick little point point on that that's where it's like someone might not someone might be listening to this and be like oh well that's that's not that big of a deal all she had to do is make a, a quick shift and just like you know cut her time in half but it's like you don't really understand until you're in that shoe and in those mm-hmm. shoes and you have that CEO mindset like you said it's yeah. like a grind it's a hamster wheel we're just non-stop going so it's very difficult yeah and, it, and it's really a hard paradigm shift to embrace energy management being more important than time management yeah. and then also Realizing it's okay if I don't get back to someone right away exactly. on something, right? It's exactly. okay to take days off, like and because some of her other mentors, she was in another mastermind that helped her grow. But man, that mentor was working all the time. Yeah, she didn't take days off, right? Yeah. That's and and so that's where I'm talking about. Hey, it, like for me, I want to build great businesses, but I want to have a great life too. Yeah, exactly. I want to win in business and life. Right, the quality of life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, can you just kind of recap what people should look for to sum up like what they're yeah. looking for in a mastermind? Yeah, A is an in person. Okay. Um, B, do I align and align with the leader and the tribe? Mm-hmm. C, um, does it fit my? I add, does it fit my discomfort budget? You know, if you're in this comfort zone, I think there's comfort zone discomfort which is where the magic happens and then there's like fear massive fear zone where it's just mm-hmm. so paralyzing most of us we need to be in the discomfort zone where it's a stretch um, but it pulls you out and then uh, D hey um, am I gonna learn or grow in the areas that I want and that fits feels aligned for where I want to go with my career my business my life right now is that an emphasis within the group that I'm Considering being a part of it. Okay. Absolutely. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I know you said, oh, go ahead, go ahead. This guy's gonna cut me off. Right? <laughs> no. I have my question on the tongue That's right my brother, there. man. Let it's, me go since he's rough. over by a minute. <laughs> yeah. God, don't you ever do that? I'm just um, <laughs> Mike, so I know you've been a part of some pretty big masterminds mm-hmm. yourself. Um, so, what really differentiates like your mastermind after being like in those other bigger masterminds mm-hmm. and kind of having those goggles like sitting in there? Yeah, I'd say there's, there's an element like a lot of my members as I've done recaps and and seeing a lot of their progress, like, you know, I've had so many members, 4X or 5X their income. Um, you know, what I've seen is there's a spiritual dimension um, that, I, that I lead with and that I bring into the group. And, and it starts with this identity shift. When I get the identity shift, because we act according to our identity, and that's why I was telling you guys, you know, one of the things I'm unpacking is my next identity shift. Like, how do I set the stage so I can be a 15 million a year guy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm not a 15 million a year guy yet. I have that capacity, but the reality and the actual, or the reality and the potential is there's still a sizable gap that yeah, I want to close. That little word you said, yet. Yeah, Most exactly. people would be like, oh, yeah, I'll yeah, never yeah. be there, but it's like, yeah. you're just saying yet, which yeah. is amazing. Yeah. So, um, what was the question again? <laughs> yeah, so just how I know this guy always cutting people off. No, okay. uh, how do you differentiate your oh, mastermind yeah, yeah. from others? So, you know, I think a great mentor and a great uh, environment, like, uh, it starts with identity because I can give you, you know, so many tools, so many systems, so many things that you will not execute on if your identity doesn't match. So you got to build the identity first and then 
learn the systems, the tools, or hire the team, all that. Because it's, it's the same principle of lottery winners. Why are they broke two right. years after they make their millions? Because their identity didn't shift. Their relationship with money didn't shift. Uh, their relationship with business or investment, none of that shifted. Same thing NFL players. You know, three, three and a half years later, after retiring, most of them are broke again. Yeah. Because their identity did not shift. Yeah. So that's why the sustainable part doesn't mean you're not going to have ups and downs. You know, any most any entrepreneur who's worth and solve has been through ups and downs. And you guys are, know a bunch of them, right? So, um, but your identity will pull you back up. Identity is like, uh, identity and tribe are like, it's like reverse gravity. It's like gravity that pulls you up. Okay, so, if, and, and, and if your reality is bigger than your identity, then your identity will pull the reality back down. Yeah, yeah. So, I like that. That's that's powerful. The starting with identity yeah. makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say that's one thing that's a little different about mine is I work more heavily on that and work heavier on the spiritual side, the spiritual game of entrepreneurship, um, and that inner soul battle of like creating and showing up and. Being the man or the woman that you yeah. know you're called to be, but you're afraid. Exactly. You're afraid. You're just in, in the wrong environment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. If you guys are looking to be a part of a badass network, if you guys are looking to learn more about marketing, get more coaching and accountability, more systems, more structure, more strategy, if you guys are looking to enhance your lifestyle, and if you guys are looking to make more income, influence, and impact, make sure to check out the link below and try to apply to our mastermind, the Dynamic Business Builders Mastermind. See if you guys are a good fit. We would love to have you. So when does somebody, when, when should an entrepreneur seek a mastermind or, or a tribe like that? I mean, because we could even say like, you know, maybe. Always. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, so is it right away or should there be like a year of at least getting their hands dirty? Maybe they create like some sort of like barrier. When, when, when you're at the beginning, find a beginning group. When okay. you're in, when you're intermediate, get in an intermediate group that will make you a little bit uncomfortable. Like each level should make you a little bit uncomfortable. If you want, it's like borrowing or getting paid in advance. Yeah. You know, when you when I get to learn from other people's mistakes and wisdom like my business partner Michael, he's had 33 businesses and has like made it all and lost it all twice. And he really knows some stuff with certain uh, like asset protection and a bunch of other things that are complicated, but if I'm going to that next level, then or when I'm going to that next level, it's like, man, I need that. And so I can borrow from him. Yeah and other mastermind groups like I when I was part of Tony Robbins I like learned so much from his whole group in the environment and the tribe and it shifted me um, Lewis Howell same thing I learned a lot of the influencer game and a lot of this thought leader game that I wanted to be in and now I'm stepping more deeply into that and got my mm -hmm. book coming out before long and things like that yeah, so, yeah. That's a good kind yeah. of Yeah. And then obviously like, you know, we talk about what to look for, but you know, what are some things that they should like red flag if they're looking into masterminds or, you know, some things that maybe you're seeing like wrong with some of these like leaders like in these masterminds? Mm -hmm. Um A, do they truly genuinely care about right. him? Yeah. Um I've seen that in a handful of spots. Um and then yeah, I'd say that's the number one thing. Okay. If, if they don't seem to um, like really believe in me and want to guide me towards where I need to go, um, like it may not make sense to them, right? Like you, you want someone that can see not the past for where you've been, but the future for where you're going. Right. Nice set. Yeah, I agree, percent perfect sense. I, I feel really like truly care. You know, yeah, like, and just just to sh I, I think I've shared this with you before. We've been part of like elite masterminds too, and I just I've had that feeling too, where just you're in it and you just didn't do enough research. That person just didn't really care, but still, like we did the best we could to just yeah. maximize that and met some amazing people and mm -hmm. took action on our own. But yeah, I yeah. think that's so yeah. important though. Does a person really care? Yeah, exactly. And then and then I'd add, is it the right size group? Very too, true. because some of these groups are so massive. I don't think they're really masterminds. It's like they're a small mini conference. conference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, I, I, you know, I get that. I, I get the value of those too. Like, I'm not knocking those, but it's a different value proposition. Yeah, it's not intimate. Yeah, exactly for sure. Okay, so 
the other day we did a Instagram uh, TV video, <laughs> yeah, which was yeah, which was, was awesome. We're getting so much good feedback on yeah. that video uh, when we shared it. I saw like your audience really just appreciate that, and it was literally on um, why it's important to build influential relationships. Right, so I wrote this down just in case. I mean, I, I, I don't know if you have this on, on top of your head because yeah. I know I know you're sharp, Mike. Uh, we <laughs> talked about you know, there's a part science and a part art to it, and there's seven steps to this. So I want to get back into this. All right, all right, part art, part science. Hmm. Um, do you want me to explain the seven steps? Hell yeah, let's what, do it. What did I write? <laughs> oh, I got you. That's why I got you. So number number one, become a person of value. Number two, connect with generous spirits. Oh, yeah. Three, give intentionally. Four, follow up. Five, collaborate with generous people. Six, serve. Seven, nurture and expand your relationships. Mm. All right, so number one, become a person of value. So this, I love this one, and this is where it goes down to your morning routines. As I develop, as I grow as a person, as I, my wisdom, my insight, my ability to uh, help and serve my fellow man is that elevates then I'm more of a person of value okay right so uh, then I have more to offer the world you know through all my experiences through all my mistakes like you know I was at a writers group in Nashville a couple weeks ago and someone said hey you're you don't pay a coach for their successes you pay a coach for their failures mm -hmm. like, Wow. wow, I got a lot of failures. To I, share. Share failures. I haven't shared them enough yet, but I need to share a lot more of them. But um, because of all the experiences I've had, good and bad, you know what? I got a lot to share, right? And I'm a person of value because I can look at, like I was telling you about the young actor that I'm yeah. likely going to be mentoring and coaching. Um, very successful and, and you know reasonably famous, right? Big following, all that. Um, six million followers so far and I get to really shepherd him and guide him because I've got you know 20 years of hardcore business wisdom knowledge read thousand books you know spent over half a half a yeah half a million on myself mm -hmm. and personal development and and then I have something to provide in terms of value to someone like I can meet I've you know I met the most famous poet the other day um, and we're connecting and collaborating. He's got two million followers on Instagram. I get to connect and support him potentially. We'll see. But I already provided value for him because I connected him to another friend that has a nice audience that has a thriving podcast and, and he wants to grow his podcast and grow his audience. And yeah. she's a big fan already. So it's like win-win. So... Yeah. Uh, that's the first one. What was the second one? Second one is <laughs> gotcha. it's fine. Connect with generous spirit. Oh yeah, just yeah. So like the reason that poet responded back to me, even though he gets hundreds of DMs a day. Now I'd met him the night before in his poetry reading. My wife's a poet, so I met him the night before and asked insightful, thoughtful questions. Then encouraged him and dropped a few seeds. Um, and then I followed up the next day okay. and planted a few seeds. Hey, I, I'd love to connect you with this person. I think that'd be great for you. So just giving, lead with giving, you know. Um, and, and what's beautiful about giving is the same root word for generosity um, is the same root word for generative. So as we become more giving, we actually become more generative, which means we create more. We, this, we step into this current of creativity. Yep. And that's one of the best things we can do. Yeah, and I always say like the same thing. The more you lead with value, you become more valuable. Yeah. You truly do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So number three, Mike, is <laughs> give intentionally. Oh yeah. So that, that, yeah, that probably falls in the same kind of category. Yeah. yeah, but when you give intentionally, like I did uh, the other day with you know the poet, and I'm just being thoughtful, and I'm I'm giving also to giving people. Like that's one of the things I love about you guys. You guys are thoughtful, giving people Thank that you. are generous so like I don't have a problem uh, giving with you guys because I know it comes back some way or another yeah and it's and it's a joy right you, if Absolutely. you give to a taker you don't get anything yeah it, it's just a black hole mm -hmm. yeah Right. Yeah. So Vortex that sucks everything in and yeah. doesn't pr release anything else <laughs> so, so yeah and then follow, yeah. follow up four. yeah so just thought, like building influential relationships is just follow up yeah and what uh, you did with part the, the of it. Yeah, and I've got to email him. He's going to speak at one of my events. Um, and I got to email him that 
today yeah. on the plane. So, <laughs> and that's the thing. I, I I even said that too. I was like, we we go to these like networking events, these places mm -hmm. where you meet so many people. We we have a good time. We exchange laughs, handshakes. Yeah. But it's like we don't follow up. We yeah. just get back to our normal distractions, mm -hmm. our bad habits, and we literally don't follow up and establish and nurture these relationships, yeah. which is so important. So yeah. you have to do that. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. number five, collaborate with generous people. Yeah, what we're doing now, exactly. right? It's, it's, it's fun. Podcast. Um, yeah, exactly. So it, it's again, it just man, it builds, and it, and and your whole world opens up as you get in more and more circles of generosity. Yeah, with abundant-minded people. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Serve. Yeah. Was that the next number one? six? Uh, serve. serve. Yeah. Just diving in and serving. You know, you don't need anything in return every time. Yeah. So just so, serving without attachments, even what we were talking about earlier, selling at its highest level of serving. Exactly. Where you're matching real wants and needs with a real solution that will solve that. So, man, beautiful. Uh, what's that Martin Luther King uh, Jr. quote? Uh, um, serving, on, uh, if I can remember it. So, and well, Mother Teresa said, uh, love until it hurts and also serve until it hurts. Mm, wow. So just, dive in our greatness is found in service you don't have to uh that's the martin luther king jr quote you don't have to have a college degree you don't have to have a ceo title you don't have to have these accolades to be great all you have to do is serve man yeah, our, Ooh, yeah. so <laughs> right, add a little bit, a little bit yeah. but, yeah, I don't remember exactly. that's good <laughs> last one yeah nurture and expand your relationships kind of what we just talked mm -hmm. about just follow yeah. up and well, but being intentional about it looks like, hey, who are you having lunch with? Who are you having dinner with? Are you doing mixers? Are you, are you creating space? Are you going to these retreats? Are you going to these masterminds? Are you going to uh, even get in on Facebook groups and yeah. pinging and connecting with people? Like, are you developing great relationships intentionally? Exactly. Yeah. So, Love it. Well, those were all yeah. good ones. So, yeah. so Mike, I know you said that you're stepping into like you know your new identity right now. Like you have a lot of great stuff going on. You're building your mastermind. Mm -hmm. You've been traveling. Your book's coming out. Mm -hmm. um, you're mentoring some pretty high level people. Um, I can keep going on with everything that you have going on right now. So, what are you just really looking forward to most, like going forward, like for the remainder of the year, and then really kind of breaking out in 2020? You know, I'd say there's still elements of transitions are messy. And so, like, I'm in a bit of this transition phase still. Like, when two years ago, I, two and a half years ago, I had, like, 55 employees in four different businesses. So, like, I've been pruning and getting myself out to shift from, like, this guy who runs and builds businesses to being a guy who's primarily a thought leader who happens to have businesses, mm -hmm. right? Like, so that is a shift that I'm really, I feel like next year I'm going to be running really fully in that I'll have my podcast I'll have my book out I'll, I'll be speaking and creating these amazing transformative experiences at a whole nother level next year versus building these business I'll still be building businesses yeah. but that's not my primary focus exactly yeah. right and it's it's what's crazy is like I, I, you have so much experience to like twenty years, right? Mm -hmm. and it's just like I feel like you're just getting warmed up. Exactly. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's yeah. Just, um, that's what's saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm excited for you, man. Yeah. I know you're gonna see it all. Yeah. 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 And then I, just before we wrap this up, I just want to thank you. You know, just like for being a mentor us to mm -hmm. us, and you know, big, big impact the past like year for us. I've learned a lot from you. Yeah. Um, and right now you're helping us like build our mastermind because mm -hmm. that's a dream come true for us to actually yeah. have that. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited for you, man. I really am. And just very thankful that we crossed paths and that we just built this relationship yeah. and, you know, what it's going to be going forward. Likewise. Well, I'm right. excited for you guys in this next Thank season. You, you know, you, you guys are going to impact a lot of people in the fitness world and beyond oh, yeah. with Absolutely. what you're creating. Yeah. You already are, but yeah. it's time like, for the next level. I feel like I'm just getting warmed up, too. Yeah. It's just the sky's the limit. It's just like, how far do I want, how far do I want to take this and, like, how long do I want to play this game for? Yeah. 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 Love it, dude. So, last question, Mike. I know we asked this the first time around, but what is your definition of living a dynamic lifestyle has that changed at all or hmm I'll probably give a different answer all right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's changed <laughs> then, exactly, then the guests can go back to yeah, the first yeah, episode yeah, and listen to it yeah <laughs> um man it's living a life filled with purpose okay. meaning adventure love and fulfillment where you are aligned with your creator's purpose for you and you're a conduit of transformation, of growth, of love, of divine expression. Okay. 
So I'm sure that's very different from what I said first. No, I think time. it was. <laughs> it's horrible. It's horrible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the, like, the first one you said that living a dynamic lifestyle is living in the Palisades. Oh, uh, yeah. That, that is a dynamic lifestyle. That's a whole other dynamic. Yeah, yeah. So is there anything we can support you on? Um, where, where can we find more information about your mastermind? Yeah, uh, risingstarsmastermind.com okay. is the website for that. Uh, follow me on Instagram mm -hmm. um, and would love to connect with anyone that is wanting to grow and shift as an entrepreneur. That's that's my tribe and uh, love, you know, as I, I think I might have mentioned to you guys before, one of my positive affirmations is that a mentor and lead some of the brightest and best people in the world. And I wrote that down 10 years ago when I was just selling real estate and investing in real estate Jeez. and now i get to do that you know my goal this year is to serve and impact deeply uh, over 100 entrepreneurs through different programs that i have and fingers crossed i'll i'll hit there oh, yeah. hit that goal yeah yeah, yeah. So. all right guys so go follow mike and go check out his mastermind as well to support him so other than that we're out mike mm -hmm. thanks so much excited thanks appreciate guys. it appreciate Thank it you, mike. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. Until next time. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you guys are looking to be a part of a badass network, if you guys are looking to learn more about marketing, get more coaching and accountability, more systems, more structure, more strategy, if you guys are looking to enhance your lifestyle, and if you guys are looking to make more income, influence, and impact, make sure to check out the link below and try to apply to our mastermind, the Dynamic Business Builders Mastermind. See if you guys are a good fit. We would love to have you.